Uh, I want to talk about garbled circuits. A while ago I talked about oblivious transfer and some of you saw this topic coming, but I think garbled circuits are amazing. Garbled circuits, so this is uh, ones that have been, what, purposefully garbled or? That's right. Um, so it's a cryptographic technique um, for a problem called multi-party computation. Multi-party computation is when you have multiple people um, that want to compute something, right? It's a computation. Um, but they don't want to leak their private information to others. So a famous motivating example is Yao's millionaire's problem. You have a dinner and there's a bunch of rich people there um, and the richest person wants to pay the bill but they don't know who the richest person is. Did we talk about this kind of problem of the rich people paying the bill? Wasn't that the beginning of uh, Oblivious Transfer? We did a little bit on that, didn't we? Yes. So uh, it turns out that Oblivious Transfer and garbled circuits go hand in hand. So everyone enters their net worth into the protocol and then the protocol will simply say person X is the richest. Garbled circuits are a way to solve this problem, but not just this problem. Um, you can solve any problem that can be logically specified uh, using Boolean circuits. So that's pretty much how computers work. Um, and, and compute the answer and just give you the answer and not leak any other information. So a quick reminder uh, about oblivious transfer. Uh, the idea is that you're thinking of the value zero or one and I want you to know a secret uh, depending on which bit you're thinking of. Um, and I should not learn your bit and you should not learn what the other potential value is. Let's think about the millionaire's problem for just you and I, right? So two people. So garbled circuits actually is always works with two people. Um, there's the garbler uh, and the evaluator. Those are, are the terms. So that means that you have a certain net worth, I have a certain net worth. We want to figure out who's richer and we don't want the other person to know exactly how much money we have. I will be the garbler, so that means that I will build an encrypted circuit and I will give you that encrypted circuit and I will let you do some oblivious transfer to translate your net worth in bits into a sequence of secrets. And you can then feed those secrets into the circuit and the circuit will then either say, you're richer or I'm richer. It's of course going to be a big, relatively big uh, Boolean circuit. Um, not very big for a computer, but too big for this piece of paper, right? So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to play a different game. Um, you're thinking of a bit, zero or one. I'm thinking of a bit, zero or one. And what we want to learn is whether we both are thinking of the bit one. Um, and if the answer is yes, then of course we will learn the other person was thinking of the bit one. But if the answer is no, and I was thinking of the bit zero, I don't want to learn if you were also thinking zero or if you were thinking one, right? So this circuit is a simple AND gate, right? The answer is one if both of us have one and it's zero otherwise. So it's a very simple Boolean circuit. So you supply a bit and we call that bit S. And I supply a bit and we'll call that bit T. So obviously Sean's bit, Tim's bit. And what we want to compute is the AND gate of this and we'll call that the result. Right, now if we do this in regular Boolean logic, you supply a value, I supply a value, we do the AND and we get the value. The problem is I will know exactly what your value is and you will know what my value is. So we're going to do this differently. We're going to use um, a trick for this gate. So rather than simply having the value zero or the value one, we're going to have a large value called the wire value. And there are two possible wire values, wire value for true and the wire value for false, right? So we can call them S zero and S one. So the wire value for S if the bit is zero and the wire value for S if the value you're thinking of is one. Similarly, on my wire, there will be two possible wire values, T0 and T1, again corresponding to false and true, and the output will be one of two wire values as well. And that's it, right? So assuming that I'm the garbler and you're the evaluator, 
right? That means that as the gobbler, I'm selecting the wire values S0, S1, T0, T1, R0, and R1, and I'm constructing this gate. Then you, as the evaluator, will simply take the gobbled circuit that I created and feed in S0 or S1 without you learning what the values of S0 and S1 are. And that's, of course, where oblivious transfer comes in. Now, how do we do this in practice? What's the big trick of gobbled circuits? Well, this gate is actually a table of encryptions. So, what are the possible values? I think we've all heard of a truth table, right? So, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. That represents the four possible inputs, right? So this is S and this is T. And then what are the output values? Well, that's R, right? And what we want is 0, 0, 0, 1, right? So this is the logical interpretation of the gate. But if we do encryption, okay, what do we have? Well, we've got the wire value S0, S0, S1, S1, T0, T1, T0, and T1, right? Those are just the wire values corresponding to the bits. And what we want as output is R0, 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 and R1. Now, the big trick is that we're going to do four encryptions, four different encryptions. We're going to take the value R1 and encrypt it using the combination S0, T0, right? So this is some bit string and this is some bit string, the, the big wire values, right? We combine them together into a single key and we encrypt R0 with that. So it's the encryption of R0, symmetric encryption, I should say, uh, under the key that is, consists of S0 and T0, right? So that means that if you, the evaluator, have the values S0 and T0, you can decrypt this value and find the value R0. Similarly for the other ones. We want the value R0 here, and we're going to encrypt it with the combination S0 and T1. And here we encrypt the value using S1 and T0. And finally, the only time we get R1 as the output is when both values are 1. So it's S1, T1. And this is the table that I'm going to provide you, right? Because I came up with the values S0, S1, T0, T1, R0, and R1. So I can compute all these encryptions, right? I put them in a table and I then shuffle the table a bit. So you don't know, oh, it's a top value, so it's zero, zero, right? You don't want to know that. So I'm gonna shuffle the rows, uh, but I'm gonna give you these four values. Then I'm going to give you the bit that I'm thinking of. In other words, I'm just going to give you T0 or T1. You won't be able to learn the other value because there's nothing special about this value, right? Um, so I'm going to give you, for example, T0 because I'm thinking of the bit zero. Then you need to get the bit S0 or S1. Now this is where oblivious transfer comes in. You think of the bit 0 or 1, and I do the oblivious transfer protocol with you. If you were thinking of 0, you will get S0. If you were thinking of 1, you'll get S1, right? And you won't be able to compute the other value from there. So you now know either S0 or S1, and either T0 or T1, whichever I gave to you, and based on that combination, you can only decrypt one of these four rows properly. And you don't necessarily know which is which because, yeah, okay, I see, yeah, yeah. And you don't know which is which, exactly, because we're shuffling the rows, right? Now the problem is, there's a minor problem here, which is that you can misdecrypt something, right? You can just use the wrong key and you'll still get an output. Uh, so there's a couple of solutions for that. Uh, the most common one is called uh, point and permute. It's a fancy way of saying that in S0 or in S1 and in S T0 or in T1, I'm actually going to give you a hint which row to decrypt, but you still don't know whether that row corresponds to this one or that one. You just know I need to use 
that particular row. So that, that's a trick that they use. I've given here an example with a single gate. In general, I could then use this value r you know, for another bigger gate, right? I can then use this as an input together with some other data from a different circuit and perhaps do an OR with that and construct a big circuit, arbitrarily big. And that means that we can do any arbitrary combination, including the millionaire's problem. And there's gonna be a drawback, right? What's the problem with it? Yes, so it can do anything. Uh, it only uses symmetric encryption. Now, I think it's been said on this channel many times, symmetric encryption is super efficient. Yes, but even if it's super efficient, if we're talking about symmetric encryption of 128 bits, milliseconds, no, microseconds even, right? Um, but that is to do a single gate. And, and a single gate in a computer doesn't take microseconds, it takes nanoseconds. So it's still slowing your circuit down by a lot. As you can imagine, every circuit also has four encryptions that are usually 128 bits long times four. You know, there's some tricks you can do to reduce it, but the circuit description is massive. So I'm going to send you mega, if not gigabytes of data in order to construct this circuit. Um, so while it can solve any problem in theory, um, it can be a bit slow for more advanced problems. Was seven of diamonds and message one was the nine of uh, spades, right? Um, and now Alice wants to communicate this. Pretty tiny. What I wanted to do is to have a progress bar where it fills on top of the text.